Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thermia. Welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. Apparently we're starting off in Kotri's room and Kotri is moaning. Let's see what happens. Last episode we have had to deal with quite a lot of things that could happen. Quite a lot of things happen between Aoi and Kotri. And there may be some complications with the parents and all that, but I guess we're gonna see what happens. I think it was her moaning, right? Unless something else is happening. Oh, someone's making food. Good morning. Good morning, Kotari. Is everybody in the kitchen now? <laughs> yep, pretty much everybody is in. Where is Yoru? There she is. いやー、一人寝が寂しくて。昨日朝ちゃんたちに混ぜてもらってたの。え、しでる。からっていただいてます。これ、小鳥先輩が作ったんですよね。いいけど、全部食べちゃダメよ。それ本当は青いのなんだ
they can eat them, right? Oh, now she's okay. At first, at first, talk to Agyo, she's like, no, those are Aoi's. And now that the rest are back, she's like, okay, everybody can have them. <laughs> There's rice and miso soup too. I'll get you some. The entrance doorbell rang just as I was scooping up the serving of rice. So now I pattered off to the entrance. Who else could be entering in? Like, who else is there? A bit later. Hey! Anchan's back. Hey, Anchan. As he entered, all the girls blushed a little and began fixing their hair. <laughs> oh! That happened also before several times, so it's pretty. <laughs> it's a pretty normal thing now. And even Hotaru's. Everybody is here. What is happening? <laughs> Okay, either we gotta either we're getting really close to the finish here and now everybody is gathering in, right, to see the the big glide, I guess, or something something major is gonna happen here. Because I don't know why there'll be so many people you know coming together and so you know showing other people as well, like we met previously. Like everybody's here now. Yo, And of course Matsuga as well. <laughs> Hotaru, Mabo, what are you doing here? Gotcha. Saying that, she put three packs of strawberries on the table. What about you, Mabo? Oh, really? <laughs> oh my god, I completely forgot how much of a tsun he is. I don't know why. It's, 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 see, it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> it's... It's so out of place, but it's so fitting as well. <laughs> best tsundere ever. Matsu Masatsuku. Mabu. Best tsundere of all time, officially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. Say it, don't spray it. Yeah, that's an understatement. Anchan, are you guys going to eat breakfast? I guess making all these croquettes was a good call. Amane? I think yeah. And she's here. Is it here? Is it her? I mean, rang like four times in a row. Ryoko headed towards the entrance. A moment later... Of course, missing the most important person ever, Amane. The start, the, the beginning, the catalyst that caused the club, and practically the entire story to happen, right, sort of. <laughs> Amane walked in with a huge smile on her face. Morning. What happened? You here early. That would be a little more believable. <laughs> Even, okay, I, I'm convinced. This is definitely Amane. Forgetting that she was hungry. Perfect trait for her. <laughs> Here you are. In a moment, the normal quiet morning suddenly became very noisy. It just felt like the morning before a festival. Okay, okay, I'm on it. Kota, it's okay. <laughs> Let people eat. 
Oh yeah, she dropped the honorifics and everybody noticed. Everyone noticed how she left out the honorifics. Usually, I believe the the, the meaning behind the honorifics. Usually, the honorifics show respect, but when you drop the honorifics, it makes it a little more personal and makes a, it feels like the people are a little bit closer, as far as I understand. So yeah, dropping the honorifics is kind of a big deal, I guess. It was a pretty cool morning. It really felt as if summer was about to end. This was likely the last summer for us. Yeah. The very last, because there could be a possibility that Kotori may never come back because of parents. Hopefully everything goes well, but it really feels like things are going to be turning for the worst. I'm trying to be as optimistic as I can, it's just... I can't help but get this feeling, right? <clears throat> Today's flight is all ready to go. The morning glory will appear tomorrow. Think of it like that. Everyone was able to get in the mood to really focus on the work. It was started to be like the real flight, from takeoffs all the way to getting up to the clouds. Air currents are heavily dependent on season time, and the patterns of pressure in the sky. This makes it difficult to fly the same course the same way. However, planes with frequently vertical drafts uh, tend to tend to have them because of topological reasons. Today's flight is trying to be as close as it could be to the real thing. It's basically a preview. どうだった Oh yeah, because yeah, since we decided to select Kotri as our primary pilot for catching the morning glory, she is going to be a slightly inexperienced compared to Aoi. But you know what? Kotri got it. I think she totally got it. After coming back from our second flight, we were taking a break while Agiha and the crew were checking the glider. Flying an unfamiliar course was particularly hard, since the wind is strong today. I had been directing the course from behind, the, uh, from behind so that Kotri could focus on controlling the glider. <laughs> うん。あげは先輩、チェック完了しました。こっち異常なしです。こっちもね。オッケー。じゃあ、あと no, to fly while we go while we got the time to spare. I don't want to be flying. I, I don't want to be trying to come back when the sun's already uh, gone down. An outside landing. Good, th good thing they started going into it because I was about to ask what that is. Outside landing is basically landing somewhere other than the runway. If the glider runs out of power, that means we can't return to the runway like normal. However, it isn't exactly the same as an emergency landing. Rather, it is to land in a place that won't be a bother and that allows for recovery if necessary. Of course, that's ignoring the, any possibility of damage to the aircraft. Since we never flew very far, we always flew with the assumption we'd be returning to the runway. We're still essentially going, uh, doing that today, but there's no guarantee when the real flight happens. Luckily, there's a lot of open land on the Kazugaru mountainside. It shouldn't be too hard to find a place to go uh, to do an outside landing. I'm gonna whisper that she looked at the clouds moving briskly across the sky. Yeah, it's much stronger than we had anticipated. We almost had to do an outside landing earlier. Oi! Thanks for that. Mabo came back with a convenience store bag in hand. He'd been out on a trip since morning. It's about the time he usually get bored, but he's surprisingly been helping out while with a lot of stuff. Thanks, Mabo. <laughs> Best Sundari in any visual novel. <laughs> we just need to have. I remember, I need to make see if I can create that label again that I made a long time ago, a Sundari label. But instead of having any other Sundari, we just need to have Mabo on it, just Matsutsuku label of Sundari. <laughs> I just save it as a PNG. And anytime we find another Tsundara, then we're gonna give him an official Mabo label. 
<laughs> I'm gonna make it a thing. Trust me, I will make it a thing and I'll make it beautiful. Oh, he does. Oh, yeah, he does. He did, did admit. I think he told us that. I took the cold sports drink from Mabo and handed one to Kotori. There's no AC in the cockpit, so it's like being in greenhouse. It's really used to get dehydrated. Okay, about time to get going. Since the wind was strong today, the glider was moored to the ground. After it was released, Kotori headed off to the cockpit. As Aga called out to me and went to take the cookies from her. The wind suddenly changed directions. The wind coming from the lake suddenly blew stronger than it had all day. Turning, turning my head to look upon, I heard a minor shriek. I saw. Not only the glider being pushed by the sudden burst of wind, but also, right in the front of the giant wind, completely helpless Kotori. Wait, so the glider was being pushed onto her? Kotori! Oh lord. I called it! Something bad is gonna happen! This is the, this is the part of any story usually where the climax happens, something bad is going on. The next thing we knew, Kotori was hit by the main wing and sent flying out of a wheelchair. Ooh, damn! Kotori! By the time I had made it to her side, she lost consciousness. God damn it. Well, I called it. I legit called it. I hope she's okay though. Damn, you get stopped by a freaking wing? I mean, that's like, it's a lot bigger than our previous glider, so it must be heavy as hell. I pace back and forth in front of the dorm telephone. Yeah. A pause mid response. Kotori was taken to the hospital in the ambulance. Hibari went with her, and I had only heard a little from her. While she had no visible injuries, Kotori was going to be given a thorough examination. Luckily, the wing, uh, the wing hit a wheelchair, so Kotori was only knocked out of it. Hibari was supposed to contact me and let me know the results, but I still haven't heard anything. Well, that's totally not gonna make anything tense or anything. I stared at my fo silent phone. I let out a frustrated sigh as the doorbell rang. Only a moment later, there was a sudden bang on the door. N Nani? Come in. Akiya backed up and opened the door. Standing there was... <sighs> Hello, Tobioka? Tobioka Sensei? Hamane wa muji nano ka? Tobioka yelled as soon as he saw me. How did he know? Why was he that frantic? Hundreds of questions popped in my head. She's still at the hospital. Doko no byouin da? I told him the directions I had heard from Hibari. She had no obvious injuries. They're giving her a thorough examination right now. <sighs> <sighs> this is a little weird. Wouldn't ever expect. I would expect Tobiko would be the last person to be concerned about any of us. Looking closer, I could see he was sweating. Besides breathing heavily, sweat was uh, beating on his forehead and messing up his thinning hair. It seems like he heard about the accident and instantly ran here. No, not seems like. Morino Sensei should be at the hospital. Morino Sensei is our homeroom teacher. But Tobioka isn't. Why would he rush all the way out here? Amana had come running from the dining hall after hearing the noise. Tobioka glared at Amana as soon as he saw her. Again? Is this what happened to Iska? I think. Is it? This has to do something that happened with Iska. It has to be. Iska is uh, Amana's um, friend. Amana's friend actually started the soaring club. 
And while they were away on a trip, I think over the weekend or something, over a break, uh, they came back and the glider was found beat up, most likely from a crash, and the Isco was never found anywhere, so... Ivana stood still, seemingly paralyzed by fear from the vicious rep rep reprimanding the Tobioka Bart. <sighs> he then gave us all a rage-filled stare. Wait, no, no, we all proved. What is wait? What is he talking about? We all proved. What did he say again, real quick? Happened unappro unapproved out of school. What do you mean it was unapproved out of school activity? We all proved. Well, I guess maybe the activity wasn't. But as a club, we got approved. He's scarily serious. He spoke as if he had some deep seating grudge. When finished, he marched out of the dorm. He was likely headed to the hospital Kotari had been taken to. This is a really odd reaction from him. My theory right now is maybe he used to be the like the supervisor for the club, right? And maybe he's against the club personally after whatever happened with Itsuka. That's what I'm thinking here. That's that's what we were wondering as well. I have no idea. Tobioka was mad. I could understand and even have predicted that much. He was more than angry, however. I could see that he was genuinely worried about Kotari. He wasn't her homeroom teacher, supervisor, or even someone who had much contact with her. He had no particular reason to feel that strong about Kotari. Well, that was probably normal for a teacher. It seems still seems way too strong. Amana spoke quietly. We had repeated this conversation a number of times after Kotori had been taken to the hospital. Akari had said, it can't be recognized as a club unless you have a supervisor, which is why we asked Amane. That was just a front though. We intended to take all responsibility were something to actually happen. But the truth is that when something did happen, Amane would be the one to take the fall. Yeah. There was nothing that could be said to console her. All we could do was pray that Kotori was okay. I hope she's okay. Good lord, things went south instantly. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sam Rio. Welcome to Lev Lev Lev. Hello, what have you got here? Hello ladies, how's it going? Breasts as a treasure thing that <laughs> I kinda wanna say you could dress better. Mm. <laughs> oh. 